Hi everyone, this is Pranav. Today we will be dealing with a problem based on nested dictionaries. So the problem statement says that you need to create a program that analyzes a dictionary structure represented as a nested dictionary where the terminal values are file sizes. The program should perform the following tasks. It should find the relative path and the size of the largest file in the directory. The input is a nested dictionary where each key represents a directory name and the corresponding value is another nested dictionary for subdirectories or an integer for file size. Given here is an input directory structure. It has a root subdirectory and a uh, dir3 subdirectory. And as you can see, the terminal values are file sizes. Sorry. Now given here is the expected output for this particular input directory. Now let us write a program to find the largest file size and the largest file path. Now I will call the function def find underscore largest underscore file and we will be passing a directory as a argument. So directory is passed as an argument. Now to find the largest directory we will uh, define two variables largest file size. We will call that 0 initially because it is an integer and largest file name is an empty string. Now we are going to find the largest file size and the largest file name using conditional statements here. Now the conditional statements are going to be a bit tricky here as in so if a value for a particular key is a dictionary we are going to call the function again based on this inner dictionary. So if you can look carefully root is a key of this particular directory structure it in turn has a value as an other dictionary. So root is a subdirectory of the given directory structure. Now to find the largest file inside this particular directory structure, if we have a subdirectory, we need to call the particular function recursively using this particular subdirectory again. So that is what we will be doing when the value is a dictionary. Now for cases when the value is a integer as in here, we have a terminal file size. So in these cases we will be considering and comparing with the largest file size which we have already stored in this particular variable right here. So let us define the cases here. Now uh, to unpack a dictionary we will have to have two arguments with dictionary dot items. Now how dictionary dot items works is it returns a tuple. So to unpack a tuple we need a key and a value. Now for name comma content in directory dot items. Now what this particular line does is directory dot items returns as a tuple with uh, the corresponding keys and values. A list of tuples with uh, keys and values namely the file name and its particular content. So let us say in this particular uh, stuff over here this input when we give directory structure dot items we will get root as one particular uh, element in the tuple along with its particular content which will be a dictionary. Now for similarly for directory 3 we have an other dictionary. So that is what dictionary uh, directory dot items is going to provide over here. Now for name comma content will unpack, unpack the tuple in this list of tuples. Now we have to check for the data type of content. So as I had previously mentioned if your content is a dictionary, we are going to call it recursively using the same function. If it is an integer, we are going to compare with the largest file size and check if it is our required file. Now we will define the if else conditions for comparing the data type of content. Now if type of content is double equal to int, what we will do is we will compare the largest file size with content. So if content greater than largest underscore file underscore size. We will change largest file size to content and the largest file name to name. So largest file size is equal to content and largest file name is going to be the current uh, name of the uh, file which is unpacked over here. Now 
when the type of content is a dictionary, we'll deal with it in a different way. So elif type of content is a dictionary. What we'll do here is we'll call the function recursively with this particular content as our new directory because content now refers to a subdirectory. So what we'll do is we'll call the function using uh, content itself as a directory. Now, if we are going to make a recursive call, it will return some values. So the main function as it is, is going to return us the uh, largest file size and the largest file name, right? So we'll make the return statement first in the uh, outside the for loop. So return largest file size, comma, largest file name. Now, these two values are going to be returned every time we make this function call. So even the recursive call for the subdirectory is going to return us a largest file size along with the largest file name. So we'll have to store that in two variables, which I'm going to call sub largest underscore size and sub largest underscore name. So these two are going to store our uh, file sizes of the subdirectories. So I'm going to make the recursive call over here for find largest underscore file. Now, as I had mentioned, we are going to treat content as our new directory. It is a subdirectory in our main uh, directory structure given, but for this particular recursive call, we are going to consider it itself as a di directory. So I'll pass content over here and this will return us a sub largest file, I mean sub largest size and sub largest name and we'll deal with these two separately over here. Now, there can be two cases. When your sub-largest size is greater than your largest file size or it is lesser than your largest file size. So, we'll define what happens when our sub-largest size is greater than our largest file size. Now, we'll define the case when our sub-largest size is greater than our largest file size. So, if sub-largest size is greater than our largest file size, what we'll do here is the largest file size can be directly uh, reassigned as the sub-largest size. It is pretty intuitive. So we'll go on to do that first. So largest file size equals sub-largest size. Now to change the largest file name, we have to be a bit careful because we have made this function call using a subdirectory. So when we are calling the function with a subdirectory, we need to remember the root element which made the call. So here, if you can look carefully, name is the root. Content is a subdirectory of this particular root. So when we include the path of any file in this particular subdirectory, we need to include the root name as well. So your largest underscore file name is going to have name plus slash plus your sub largest uh, name. This is because you include your root element along with a slash to indicate that it is a path coming back from your uh, root element. So uh, this particular sub largest name resides in this particular root element called name. So whenever you make a recursive call to a subdirectory, it gets attached with its root element if it is particularly a largest file in that particular subdirectory. Now that sums up our code for finding the largest file name and the largest file size. So let us run uh, this program for the given input over here I'll just paste it. Uh, I'll make a function call and store them as uh, largest file size and largest file name is equal to find largest file of this particular directory we have here. Now, as we have seen in the uh, expected output, we want the file name first in one line and the file size next line along with this bytes. So we'll make the print statements accordingly. So we have print largest file name. So that will print our largest file name in one line. And then in the next line, we'll print largest file size. And since we want it as a 
uh, string as 300 bytes, we'll convert this to a string first. So string. And we'll concatenate it with bytes. So let us run this program. Yeah, so we have root slash file file dot txt and 300 bytes, which is same as the expected output mentioned here. Thank you.